Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Read With Me. I'm yours truly, Isabel Bedell. I'm here to read with you another amazing book for the month of April. If you don't know, now you know, but we are actually reading 22 books for the year of 2022. This is really, really new because actually last year, the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that, and pretty much all the other years of my life, I did not read a book, okay? I haven't actually dedicated myself to read more than maybe a book a year, or maybe two books a year. But now that we're actually getting into this rhythm, you know, it's been four months, and we've read, um, well, more than four books because there's one on personal freedom and then there's one on financial freedom. I do the financial freedom part. So it's really, really powerful because this, this notion of, or this thought of, Oh, I'm not a reader or I don't like to read or why would I read? I'll just listen to the audio book. Completely different now. I absolutely love having the physical, tangible book in hand. Absolutely love reading and taking this time to read because I'm treating it like a self care moment. It's literally almost like an opportunity for me to step out of my day to day activities, you know, managing a company and running a really powerful coaching business and, you know, being a wife, being a daughter, being a sister, being a cousin, you know, there's so many different roles in my life. And as I continue to evolve, more and more and more roles get added into my life. I want to be set up for success. Like these moments that are very, very, you know, special having the opportunity to read and dig into the secrets of the books that we're reading on are so powerful. You know, I truly believe that there's hidden gems, hidden secrets within each book that we choose to read, whether it's on financial freedom or personal freedom, it's, they're all really, really unique and special. So I'm really, really excited to actually share with you guys the book that we're going to be covering for the month of April abundant April, I must add, because it sure is an abundant month. Okay, this is Lori Grainer. Okay, it's her book, Invent It, Sell It, Bank It. She is a star of ABC's Shark Tank. If you have not checked out Shark Tank, okay, make sure to do so. She's like one of the coolest sharks on the show. She's definitely one of my top uh, sharks that I would love to partner up with if, you know, I ever invent a product. Um, but what I really enjoyed about Lori, and one of the reasons why we chose this particular book is that she continues to be um, not only a female within the sharks, but she's been the most consistent. Like it's been 20 years in in Shark Tank, I believe. Um, and what's really powerful is I want to read to you guys something, and you guys should actually go on Google and check her out too. But in 2016, she invested into a company called Scrub Daddy. I don't know if you guys know about this, but she put 200000 for 20% in 2012. Sorry, 2012. In 2012, she put 200,000 for a 20% stake in the company. And guess what? Scrub Daddy has now become over a $200 million asset and it has continued to grow worldwide, not just nationwide, worldwide. Like we're currently in Mexico. And if I go to the supermarket, Scrub Daddy's right there, which is awesome. Because I remember watching uh, that particular episode a long, long, long time ago. And I've been a huge fan of the show. Um, I personally love Lori. Like she's, I feel like she's very genuine. 
when she invests. And I love the way that she actually doesn't invest into just random products that she knows she's not going to, um, you know, be successful in, but she really loves investing into, into real people, the real stories and the real stuff. So, and also her birthday is on December 9th and mine is on January 9th. So shout out to Lori girl. Yes. And she's also born in Chicago. So shout out to Chi town. We absolutely love Chicago. Um, anybody that's living in Chicago, much love to you. We absolutely love you guys. And what else? What else? You know, just go ahead and look her up right quick. Okay. But the point is we're going to be reading her book, Invent It, Sell It, Bank It. And I am so pumped to get into it because it's going to be really, really powerful. So without further ado, or do, <laughs> Um, let's get into it. Okay. Introduction. Introduction. Okay. Every man-made thing, however small, started in someone's imagination. Every man-made thing, however small, started in someone's imagination. That's how she starts off this book. Then she goes into, the alarm goes off at 4.30 a.m. I hate early mornings. I'm a night owl. And if given my choice, I go to sleep at 1 or 2 a.m. I drag myself out of bed, throw in jeans on the T-shirt, and get to my, throw on the jeans and the T-shirt, my get to the set uniform, and still bleary-eyed, managed to get myself to the Sony Picture Studio lot where Shark Tank is shot. It's the same set where The Voice is filmed. I'm the first shark to arrive at hair and makeup at 6.30 a.m. because I take the longest to get camera ready. I have more hair than any other sharks. By 8 a.m., I'm dressed and made up and downing my second huge cup of coffee, which I never drink except for when I'm shooting Shark Tank. Interesting. I'm going, it's going to be a long day and I need to be sure that I'm completely alert. The other sharks trickle in. It's always good to see them and we joke around for a few minutes, but most of us are also on our phones checking in with our respective businesses during the few moments of free time that we can squeeze in before the shooting starts. It's showtime. We settle into our respective shiny red leather armchairs. We know nothing about what lies ahead. All we can see is a bare set, empty, but for the colorful Persian style carpet on the floor. Then the stagehands rush on with the props. The first contestant will need to conduct his or her pitch. Loud, invigorating music is playing to pump us up and get everyone in a good mood to start the day. The stagehands disappear and the director starts counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. Quiet, on the set. The large automatic doors in front of us swing open and the first entrepreneur walks down the long hallway towards us, past the swimming sharks and into the tank. There are about 30 seconds between the time New contestants walk through the double doors into the tank and the time they start to pitch. Mm, that's a good note to add. You know, if you're considering pitching, there are about 30 seconds between the time new contestants walk through the double doors into the tank and the time they start to pitch. They stand on the, on the carpet silently for a few seconds facing the sharks and then start their pitch. It's a nerve-wracking time for the entrepreneurs. They know this is their big moment. For the sharks, it represents a moment of anticipation. I particularly notice which entrepreneur makes eye contact with me and which don't. And they stand there nervously. We see about eight or nine pitches a day. Last I heard, around 35,000 35, people applied to an audition for a spot on season five. Each one who makes it onto the show is so helpful, hopeful, so eager to get a deal, not just for the influx of cash, but also the partnership, mentoring, and connections that any one of the five sharks can offer. 
As they talk, we furiously scribble down the financials, the retail history, the valuations to keep track of all the information coming to us. In the shadows, I know Dan, my husband, who is also the VP of my company, is sitting there writing everything down too. All the sharks have someone on set who will typically take notes. We see many entrepreneurs in Though the TV audience sees only approximately 12 minutes of the pitch, the pitches can run anywhere from half an hour to two hours. That's usually long, but it has happened. Because things go so fast and get so heated, I like reminders so I can recall in more detail everything that went on. I love reading the funny things the entrepreneurs or my fellow sharks have said. It's so interesting and often so hilarious. To look back a few weeks later, and when I'm reviewing my notes and then to see it on air on TV when it comes to life all over again. I work hard to make sure I give each p- each pitch my full attention, especially the ones that show up last when we are all exhausted. I concentrate trying to ignore everything that might distract me, like the fact that it's freezing because the air conditioning is so strong. Nothing matters except the people standing there pitching their hearts out in the hope that one of us will believe in their idea is worth our investment, time, effort, and money. It's a shame that viewers at home can't actually feel the crackle of energy that surges through the room when an inventor strikes a deal. It's so exciting to know that one of them will be on his or her way to a bigger journey. On the flip side, the entrepreneur's disappointment is crushing when they leave the tank empty-handed. But for most of them, I think that disappointment is just temporary for the true entrepreneurs live on to see promise in another day. That's their nature. I know the shark in me must be honest, not just because that's what is best for my business, but also because that's what's best for the inventor's business too. Dropping out or voicing concerns and criticism about the business or product pitch is actually the kindest thing you can I can do. I'm doing someone a disservice if, out of pity or sympathy, I let an investor, investor get by with a product I truly think will never make it. I feel it's wiser to go back to the proverbial drawing board and try to create something new, something different, something better. Mm, I love that. You know, I'm going to just say something right here. Some of us are concerned to give other people criticism, you know, when it's, when it's true. Okay. Some of us, I don't know. There's some people out there that they just criticize on everything and they have no right to. And then it's like, where is this coming from? But there's people that have experience in the field and have a great track record. Okay. And whenever they do say something like feedback or something, I don't think it should be taken lightly. And sometimes people take it personally and they don't want to listen to someone just because they are so emotionally attached to that one thing that they invented. When in reality, if they just tweak something or shift something or just like take that feedback and run with it and create something better out of it, it can just become 10 times better like that. And I've experienced that many, 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 many times, both on both spectrums, you know? So I want her to acknowledge that because I really love the fact that she's saying that it is actually the kindest thing to do, to let someone know that, you know, your stuff sucks. This is how you can improve it, (laughs) you know? I feel it's wiser to go back into the proverbial drawing board and try to create something new, something different, something better. Better to set your sights on the next product, something that really will work and allow you to reach the goals that inspire most inventors to start, to start their entrepreneurial journey, to strike out on their own, to build a career, to support a family, to leave a legacy. In short, to achieve the American dream, 
I live that dream every day. And more than anything, I want to help others achieve it too. For years, fans of my show and products on QVC, followers on my website and social media networks and Shark Tank supporters have been urging me to write a book. Many of them represent a fraction of the countless imaginative, creative individuals in this country who believe they have an idea that could be the next bendable straw, the Q-tip, or for George Foreman Group, a product so useful and so practical that people might one day take its existence for granted. They usually want to know two things, how I get to where I am and how they can get there too. It's great to mentor up and coming coming investors and it's great to mentor up and coming inventors and share what I have learned over the last 17 years about launching products and building a business from scratch. But when I think about it, what I did to bring the first invention to market all and all the products that followed, I realized that the answer to those two questions is quite simple. I worked really hard like really, really hard. That's what you have to do in how you become a successful inventor or entrepreneur. You work harder for it than you've ever worked at anything in your life. Seventeen years ago, when I created my first product, an earring organizer, and it was not because I wanted to run a multi-million dollar conglomerate. I simply had a problem that I wanted to solve. But once I was sure I'd created a perfect solution, nothing was going to keep me from getting into the market so that I could help other women solve that problem too. Whenever I hit a roadblock, I found a way around it. If I couldn't get around it, I went under it. If, I, if going under it didn't work, I'd go over it. I did whatever it took. In return, I accomplished my goal. I got my product prototyped, marketed, sold, manufactured, and on retailer shelves in about four months. Wow, that's awesome. That is a difficult feat, but I was determined to make the holiday season. I wouldn't recommend trying to rush a product out in four months. Give yourself some time. I'm ready to teach you what I know about. I'm ready to teach you what I know everything from concept to creation, manufacturing to marketing, pitching, patents, and more. But you have to be willing to put in the long hours, the nights, the weekends, the most important, your heart and soul. I can show you the road, but the fundamentals, drive, determination, and red hot passion must be your fuel. Do you have that fire within you? Good. <laughs> For anyone not scared off by the cornerstone piece of advice, read on. I've got plenty more. All of it in step by methodical step. All of it self-taught, including this. While the work required to become a successful inventor is greater, than you could ever imagine. It's more rewarding too. The only regret you will ever have is that you didn't start sooner. Invent it, sell it, bank it. We'll tell you secrets about bringing products to market that you won't hear anywhere else. It includes checklists and tangible specifics you can use as your guide. It is a book about how you make millions with your idea. You'll also find out how I did the same. I probably started out just like you. I had no experience running a business. I didn't have a ton of resources. I didn't know people in high places. I had a college degree, but I did not attend business school. In fact, I never even took a business class. My interests, my interests leaning more in a literary, cinematic, and artistic direction. Truly, I had no idea what I was doing. All I had was a great idea and the determination of 20 people of 20 people put together to bring it to life. Brilliant ideas doesn't guarantee a successful invention. Rather, it's a magical combination of a brilliant idea plus amazing willpower, tenacity, and willingness to make mistakes. I like that. A brilliant idea doesn't guarantee a successful invention. Rather, it's a magical combination of a brilliant idea plus 
amazing willpower, tenacity, and a willingness to make mistakes. I say I'm just like you, but invest inventors starting out today have many advantages that I didn't have. When I got started in 1996, there was no internet where I could access information. There were no forums where I could network with other entrepreneurs, no Kickstarter or Indiegogo. There was definitely no Shark Tank. There were few resources available to help investors with no connections and a limited amount of capital. It was tough. So if I could turn my dream into reality, I know you can too. You just have to want your dream as badly as I wanted mine. It was 2008 when I got the call to come in and meet Mark Burnett for a new show that he, ABC, and Sony were developing called Shark Tank. The meeting went great, and I was so excited to be chosen for the show. But then the most horrible thing happened. My mother, whom I love so much, died suddenly right at the same time as shooting, and I had to withdraw. It was a difficult time. The producers kept in touch with me, and three years later, I appeared in season three as a shark as a guest shark. And then I became a permanent shark in season four. Oh, Lori, I'm so sorry to hear that. Early on, the casting agent shared with me one of the reasons the show creators has sought me out. She said I was a unicorn. There was just, there was, there just wasn't anyone else out there like me. I had never thought about it. Many investors can point to one phenomenally success successful product, but it's rare to for someone to bring a large number of inventions to market. I've developed over 400 successful products. 400. Yes. And there's probably a lot more right now since this uh, book came out. People are always asking me if I'm proud of that. And I am. But what gives me the greatest pleasure is having created so many products that make people happy and make their lives easier. Had I stopped ever witnessing the success of my first invention, I would have been proud of that too. It's not about the number of inventions you bring to market. Margaret Mitchell published only one novel, but it was gone with the wind. There is great satisfaction in developing one fantastic product and watching the world fall in love with it. And it takes, and it only takes the successful launch of one brilliant idea to make you a millionaire. But whether you create one great thing or many, the steps to get you there are the same. Why didn't I stop at one invention? The, for the same reason many entrepreneurs keep turning away, even after their business takes off, the sheer joy of it. Besides, once you brought one successful product to the market, you know everything you need to bring another successful product to the market. If anything, success only makes you want to work harder. When you are obsessed and determined, as most inventors have built thriving, lucrative businesses, work doesn't feel like work. It feels like freedom. Inventors and entrepreneurs constitute a special club a collection of creatives, creative spirits, and mavericks who simply can't and won't conform to the established boundaries and limitations of the digital or the traditional workplace. Mm. Strong. We are the kind of people who must forge our own paths, now follow one already laid out for us. Like everyone else, we want to make money, but we want to earn it doing something that we love and that we can call our own. We choose to whittle our lives down the bare essentials, family, food, sleep, because we know that every hour of effort we put in will come directly back to us, to the people we love. It may seem to the outsiders like a Spartan life, all work and no play, but it isn't. Because when you're doing what you love, work is play. They will never understand what a powerful thrill it is to hold in your hand something you dreamt in your head. Girl. Yes. Mm. It may seem to the outsiders like a Spartan life. All work and no play, but it isn't. Because when you're doing what you love, work is play. They will never understand what a powerful thrill it is to hold in your hands something that you drummed up in your head. Dang. 
shout out to Lori for making such a strong and bold freaking sentence. Absolutely love that one so much. That said, my philosophy is that life's a party and you've got to have fun every day. I believe that there's always room for good food, wine, and laughter, whether it's just Dan and me going over numbers together late at night or my whole team gathered for last minute preparations for a show. Even when you're working, you should be having a good time. One more thing that sets me apart from many other inventors is entrepreneurs is that I preach extreme DIY. My expertise doesn't come from the sheer number of products I can list. It's a result of being directly involved in every facet of their creation. There is nothing you cannot learn yourself. Who can you trust better than yourself to get things done right? No one will ever care as much as you do about your business. I do believe in you, Lori. I do believe in that. Okay. You don't know about manufacturing, neither did I. But now I could run a factory if I needed to. If you aren't a lawyer and don't know a thing about patents, well, I'm not either. But now I'm educated to the point where I can, I can help, that I help write my own patents. And I've been called as a guest speaker for the U.S. Patent and Trade Office in Washington, D.C. There were a time, there was a time when I didn't know anything about what it took to bring a product to market, but I figured it out. The story you'll read in this book will reveal the lengths to which I was willing to go to to ensure my product success and that it would offer both value and pleasure to anyone who bought them. As my business grew larger, I would eventually have to delegate some responsibilities. But in those early days, I insisted on being there for every step. What I didn't know, I'd learn. If I wasn't an expert, I'd become one. No detail was too small and my efforts paid off. Because in the end, all you've got is what you're willing to bring. So you'd better bring it all. As in things, as in all things, natural creative talent will get you only so far. If you want to see your invention on shelves and stores, on television, and most important, in people's hands and homes, you have to develop skills to support your talent. To become a successful inventor is not enough to have a great idea for a product. You have to design it and manufacture it. You have to protect your design from being copied or stolen. You have to package your product and pitch it. You have to find someone willing to sell it. All of those steps require skills and finesse that you can often only learn on the job. Lucky for you, I already have it. And invent it, sell it, and bank it. That's what you're going to learn. You will learn about the ins and outs of great product design, from concept to creation, the nuts and bolts of manufacturing, patenting, packaging, pricing, and shipping, the art of, the art of pitch. The art of the pitch. I'm excited for that one. The trick to inexpensive yet effective marketing, the rules and regulations that must be followed, and the key to lining up multi multiple retail sources. I'm excited to share everything I know to give you an honest and straightforward overview of what it takes to get a product to market. It's not always an easy road like everyone else. I've had my fair share of hard knocks in life. I think... I think that's good. Struggles and setbacks make you stronger and better. And most of the time, what you think is the worst thing that could happen to you turns out to be a blessing in disguise. Yes, honey. Mm, that's right. She's preaching. This whole time, I feel like I feel like I'm rapping here. You know, she's just like laying it down every other sentence. Come on. Every time something goes wrong, you will learn from it and become better to better able to cope with the next challenge or obstacle that comes your way. To all the budding entrepreneurs, I say this. You can make almost anything happen if you, tr if you try hard enough. When you run your own business, you're taking a different journey than the average person. You're embarking on a 24-7 commitment. You never really shut the door. You, you'll take vacations, but things will come up 
and you have to be available. You need to support your team. You'll need a lot of energy to succeed in this business. You have to dream bigger. You have to reach further. I am living proof of that. With with enough fire and willpower, you can make anything happen. Failure is not an option. It's a state of mind. This book outlines the invention process in linear fashion. First, you do this, then you do that. But realize that when you're bringing a product to market, you're doing everything at once. When I launched my first invention, I ran around like a nut. It was summer and I wanted to have my product out for the holiday season, which meant I had to make a miracle happen. I had every fire going at the same time. While my prototype was being made, I was calling stores and pitching my idea. Once the prototype was done, I continued to make calls at the same time and conduct market research. Next thing I knew, I was flying around the country, making my pitch, visiting stores from Chicago to Minneapolis to Texas to California, ultimately traveling to 19 cities in 21 days. At the same time, I continued to call other stores, working on tooling, designing my packaging, and selecting a factory. I worked my butt off, and thankfully, I made a miracle happen. I've continued to work this way ever since. The thing is, that's the way most people who achieve success in this business, that's how they do things. Love that line. I hope that my story will be inspiring and that getting a peek into my thought process will be helpful when it's time for you to start making your own rapid fire decisions. Invent it, sell it, bank it will reveal how I master strategic technical skills, but it will also, it may also explain why. I have become known as the warm-blooded shark on Shark Tank. I don't think being kind or compassionate makes me less competitive in the business world. I see no point in tearing people down to get ahead. And I have also found that you can never go wrong if you try to be nice. That's why I always do my best to be respectful to all the entrepreneurs who come into the tank. Even the ones whose businesses, in my opinion, don't show much promise. When I look at them, I see myself. I know what it's like to have one shot that could make it or break everything. I've been in their shoes. I remember the people who let me down nicely and those who treated me brutally. It brings to mind something my grandfather always told me. People will always forget what you said. They will forget what you did. But they will never forget how you made them feel. I'm I'm far from perfect, but I always try to remember his words. I've never believed I had to be cutthroat or cruel to get ahead in business. However, never mistake my kindness for weakness. It's a paradox. You are responsible for your own destiny, but you can't get there alone. No matter how sure you are that you know what's best for your product, no matter how high your standards, it's important to be kind to people and to make them feel part of a team. Take the time to invest in people, not just your product. The height or longevity of any success you achieve will correlate with how well you nurture your relationships with the people you who cross your path along the way. You can be kind and compassionate and still be a shark. You'll be amazed at how far that combination will get you, especially when you're armed with all the information you need to bring your dream to reality. How do I know this for sure? And how do I know this is true? Every move I make on Shark Tank and every negotiation I engage in with the contestants or even with the sharks informed by years of lessons learned the hard way. Shark Tank is merely an extension of what I've been doing throughout my career. While I did spend the majority of the time creating, patenting, and manufacturing my own products, I have always enjoyed helping others along the way. And with this book, I have the opportunity to reach even more and to offer my take on the ins and outs of the adventure world and in more depth and detail than ever before. So finally, with Invent, Sell, and Bank, it... I can share everything I've learned over the past 17 years of inventing products and running a business with anyone who's seen me in, ta- in the tank, my, ha- my other Habitat QVC or another retail stores. But of course, this book isn't just for the fans of these shows. Anyone with a creative spirit, tremendous drive, 
and a terrific idea can use it to invent his or own way to wealth and success. My number one rule has always been to make great products to help great people, to help people. I hope this book helps you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that was the introduction to this amazing, amazing book that we are reading. Invent it, sell it, bank it by Lori. And honestly, it's amazing. I'm really, really excited for you to watch the next videos because it's going to be one of those books that, or one of these audios that you want to reread and re-listen. And you might be in the shower and something might just, you know, come to mind and you're like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. That is my million dollar idea. Or that is the one thing that I can adjust in my product or service right now that can take me to where I want to go. So I'm really, really excited for that. And I'm so excited for you. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.